Good morning everyone out there. This is Bishop Gary again. Welcome to Breakfast with the Bishop. And we are so glad to be coming to you. We hope you had a good and wonderful Memorial Day. Uh, it's a little bit late, but I too want to thank, say thank God for the soldiers and families and all. I wish you all the best of things. And I thank God for a president who reaches out and puts God in this and takes time to talk to the people. Uh, we thank God for our country, many of our presidents, praying presidents and godly men who have called upon the name of the Lord. We, we, uh, our, our pastor, Pastor Tim, brought a tremendous message Sunday morning, and the result was there's no one man can do this. You can have a great president, a not so great, doesn't matter what, we, we're not even talking about that that no one man can do it. We thank God for, for what our president did on Memorial Day, but we also know it takes all of you and I to make this country great because freedom isn't free. We want to say thank you to our church. It's growing, it's doing well. We got everything uh, rolling now. Come out and see us. Dr. Miller's done a tremendous job and uh, he's preaching a tremendous message and there's some young people coming in and you'll like what you see. I want to share a scripture with you. Uh, I feel like this is a little different in direction, but I really want to read this to you. It's found in Deuteronomy 8, and it's in verse 18. And I want to read it and give you a minute to digest it, but I think you're going to be blessed by hearing the scripture. It says, But you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you power to get wealth. I get that, that to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, and as it's the same to this day. This is a tremendous scripture for all of us children of the Lord, for all of us saints of God, uh, for all of us, uh, quote, Christians. The Lord, by his Spirit, has already through the covenant he made with our ancestors, he's already given us power to get wealth. I'm not preaching so much about money as I want to call your attention to a covenant. A covenant is a, a lasting relationship between two individuals or two parties. It's like a marriage license, though I didn't need one to be married to my wife. I was sure proud to show one to anybody that wanted to know because... It was a testimony and a covenant to something we've done. We may call it a contract today, and I want you to see that back before you were even in the game, the Lord made a contract with a people that represented his name, with a people that were that he called his. He made a contract with them, a covenant with them. He had a relationship with them, and he gave them power through that covenant, through that contract, to get wealth. And in his doing so, it brings it down to you and I where we have that same covenant relationship with the Lord. And if we have that same covenant relationship, the same terms of the contract apply. He has given you, he's given me, he's given us power to get wealth. Let me turn it a little bit in this direction. Christian, if you don't have a covenant relationship with the Lord today, take some time and pray and make a covenant with him as Jacob did. Jacob said, Lord, if you'll do this, then I'll do that. And if you would do this, then I will do that. Uh, you can't bargain with God, but you can make him some promises as he's made us some promises. Uh, I, I never made a lot of promises to my wife, but those that I made, I kept. And God don't uh, care too much about how many promises you make, but he's interested in the relationship. We want to say hello this morning to our dear, dear brothers in the, on the continent of Africa, in the, the country of Kenya, in the city of Nairobi, Kakamega, in that area around there, to our dear brothers that we love so much, uh, Brother Jeffrey Khomeini, and... Brother Joseph at karaoke, we want to say we, the same thing in the country of Tanzania to Brother Enoch Asarawisi in Bea, 
God bless all of you. I know you listen. We send out greetings of love and blessings to all of you, to the churches there, to the brothers there. There are many good ministers, pastors, and saints of God in those two countries. We also have works established in Malawi, Uganda. All of you there, God bless you. We also want to say hello to our, our dear brother in Monrovia, Liberia, Brother Mark Corman, who has just recently, he and I have come together in covenant, uh, sent me some pictures and some, some uh, showing us what's going on in, in Monrovia, in that country of Liberia. God bless you, Brother Mark. We appreciate you and your stand and your work there. Everywhere we go, church, understand the Lord has people. No matter where you are, there's somebody that is reaching out for the Lord that you can reach out and make contact with that will fellowship, that will love you. We, again, want to direct you to that scripture. He's given us power. I want you to say that word with me if you can. I don't want to preach a lot today, but I really got up excited about that scripture. He's given us power. He's a God of grace. He's a God of love. He's a God of power. Not necessarily in that order, but he covers all of those things. And here, he's talking about power. He's given us the power to get wealth. And if you look at that scripture in the true Hebrew, most of that deals with monetary or natural things. Now, I also know through experience, he's given us power to secure things in the spirit. And, be, and not be uh, uh, ignorant and unlearned, but he's given us power to secure knowledge, wisdom, faith, many of these that are spiritual gifts. And however you see it, I like to take God in the depth of God because he's bigger than anything that we can talk about. He's bigger than anything we might imagine today. And if he said he's given me power to get wealth through the covenant, I believe that. He's a big, big God. I want to talk to you just a, bit, a minute about how big God is. Fix in your mind how big you think the Lord God is. How big is he? See if you can get a picture of how just how big he is. Have you got it? I'll give you just a few seconds because I don't have a lot of time. But think with me. How big is he? You got a picture? You got an idea? You frame some type of, a, of an image or a thought. Now double that. <laughs> Multiply that by 10. Double that again. Multiply it by 100. Double that again. Multiply it by 1,000. And double it again. Now, you see what I'm saying? We're just getting started in measuring how big, how great, how good God is. Yet that same God comes and lives in our hearts as individuals and as a people and establishes us through race, color, creed, sex, that doesn't matter to him. He comes in and lives in our heart. And while he's in us, he gives us power. He gives us grace and he gives us love because he loves us and we love him. We're able to spread love because he gives us grace and gives us grace for grace. And we give grace, we're able to spread grace. Now, we have no trouble with that. We have some trouble sometimes with the power side of it. But I want you to realize he's given us power. Man, I like that. Power to get wealth if you need it. Uh, let me add this. He's given us power to get health. Over there in, in 1 Corinthians 12 talks about healing. And we, we know that he tells us in Timothy you can walk in divine life and divine health. He's given us that power through the covenant that he made with Abraham, bringing it all, in, all down to us here in our modern day as children and saints of the Most High God. He's given us power to get wealth, power through the covenant. I want you to catch that one thought. I sound like a broken record again, but it's so important to know as we come into this the rest of 2017 and then a brand new year in 2018, um, whether you think it's going to be a good one or a bad one, and I don't know. Uh, God has not said a lot of things to me about that, but I know one thing. He said he, here in this scripture, he said, I'll give you power. 
now in the book of Acts and, and in the book of uh, the last uh, chapter of the book of Luke and also in John said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you'll be my witnesses. And he talks about where you would witness in Judea, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and then going on into the other most parts of the earth. That's how powerful the power is. That's just the power to witness. But here, he says, I'll give you power to get wealth. Someone might say, well, how do we do that, Bishop? Well, there are several ways you do that. One way is, he said, in blessing, will I bless you. In giving, will I multiply your giving. I'm not asking you for money, but I know this. You can't outgive God, and the more you put into the kingdom of God, the more he gives you. The more you spend time in prayer, the more you spend time doing good, the more God blesses you. And so he gives us the ability to get power. He gives us the ability through a covenant relationship to, get, to have that power, take that power, and use that power to accumulate wealth. Now, I think he he means here, and you may not agree, but I think he means here the reason he'll give you the wealth is so that you use the wealth wisely. Someone that would squander the wealth, I don't know that he would be too eager to give us a lot of wealth just to waste it. But I believe he <clears throat> is a God of purpose and he directs our hearts, showing us that we can change today you can change today. You don't have to be poor. You don't have to be destitute. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to be down. You don't have to worry about uh, these things that are, uh, they're, they're very pressing and can, disconcerting to us. I know that, which is one reason I wanted to get on here today and be a little more serious, a little more uh, uh, provocative to get you to see how he loved us Long before we were even on this planet, he loved us and he made a covenant with our ancestors. And he said, I promise, I'll give them power. Now, he didn't promise to give us wealth. He said, I'll give you power. And if with that power, you can accumulate or get wealth. So he had it planned from the beginning. Uh, notable people of wealth in the book of Genesis, Abraham was a very wealthy man. Uh, Isaac, a very wealthy man. Jacob, a very wealthy man. Esau, a very wealthy man. Judah, a very wealthy man. And you can trace, now in the New Testament, Joseph of Arimathea, a very wealthy man. Matthew, the tax collector, a wealthy man. Zacchaeus, Lazarus, wealthy men. Jesus didn't just come to the poor and the destitute. Jesus didn't just come for, for a few people. He came <clears throat> to take our poverty. The Bible said he came that we were poor, we that were poor, he came to make us rich. I want to just say one more time how much we love all of you, how we, we, we pray that this word has blessed you, that it has filled your heart with a hope, that it has brought fresh meaning to you. Uh, I would ask that you check with us again in, in, in a, next week. We'll be back, hopefully, with something that will bless you again. This is Bishop Gary. If you need prayer, call us. Thank you for listening.